And it goes a little something like I'm Dennis Strive. And I'm Savannah Truitt. And you're watching Cutlass TV, TV News. Here's a story on this year's homecoming festivities by TJ Brown, Mason Goffey, Savannah Truitt, and Andrew Clark. This past homecoming week at Belton High School has been one for the record books. From girls' powder puff game on Sunday to boys' dance team showing off their moves at the pep assembly, the Friday night football game to the actual dance itself. Now senior Caitlin Sturgis and Tasha Nichols share what the powder puff game was like. During Powder Puff this year, it was just a great adrenaline rush, and I just put 100% effort into it. I went all out while having fun at the same time, and it, I have to thank the coaches, especially like Tanner and Gio, because they just pushed us to be our best, and yeah, it was a lot of fun. Power Puff was really, really fun. The girls really had a nice time. We worked really hard. We were dedicated. We put our blood, sweat, and tears into it. And we really beat the seniors pretty bad. Sophomore Andrew Majors and senior Dante Madden talk about how they tackled this week's game as well as the dance. My experience at the homecoming football game was um, it was good. There was a whole lot more energy and tension in the air. Um, the students came out and they gave us a good crowd too. Um, the homecoming dance was, it was, it was good. There was a, it was crazy to see like everyone dress up and look really good, and the uh, the dance was great. Um, there was, there was really fun, and it was really festive and colorful and everything like that. The decorations were really well too. Uh, I think the homecoming game was really good actually. We won, and it was by a lot. And did we all did everything right? We had a couple, few penalties, but other than that, it was good. One big key to the homecoming dance is the royalty selected. Seniors Emily White and Alex Weinsroll, as well as juniors Savannah Eccles and Michael Wright, share how they felt about being selected as this year's royalty. So they actually announced the king first this year, and I was more like excited for Alex than anything, and so I wasn't really thinking of the moment at the time. So um, when they announced me, I was just kind of like, that just happened. Uh, it was kind of crazy. It was really exciting, though. Um, Especially since me and Alex are such good friends, so it was cool to share that experience with someone. Um, when they announced me as homecoming king, um, obviously it felt awesome. It was really cool to be there, but uh, they announced me first and then the queen second, so it was like, I really wanted both of us to win. Um, it was kind of a thing where we were both in it together the whole time, and I wouldn't have been as happy if I won by myself. So I was glad when I won, but I was even more happy whenever um, she won too. When I won Homecoming Princess, I was really surprised and it was really exciting. Um, I wasn't expecting that, so it was really cool to be nominated and then win. So, Whenever I was voted uh, Homecoming Prince, I felt pretty honored and happy. But at the same time, I really wasn't that worried about it if I won or lost. It was more of just an experience thing. For Terry Brown, Jesse Larson, Mason Goffey, and Savannah Truitt, I'm Andrew Clark for Cutlass TV News. Here's a story on this year's college and career fair by Brian Reyes, Michael Lynch with Destiny Quarles, Isaac Peterson, and Daniel Wiggins. This past Wednesday, many students and their parents attended the college and career fair to view some potential future opportunities. College advisor Jack Pangborn informs us more about this fair and the benefits that come with it. So the career fairs, the college and career fairs, um, here and at universities or at other high schools, wherever they may be, the benefit is, is huge because you get to go and talk to people from different schools. Um, you, kinda, you can kind of gauge what their, what their school is going to be like based on the people that they have represent. So, you know, you've got a sign that says um, University of Central Missouri, and the guy there that's talking is really nice, and you like the way that he presents his information. They've got a lot to offer. Um, and then you go to the next one and, you know, it's a different school and they may not be as polite. They may not be, you know, ready to help you, you know. So it's kind of, it allows you to gauge the school like that. It also allows you to just 
collect information. Um, you know, it's just basic picking up papers, reading what's going on, and hearing what they have to say. So, good learning opportunity. Senior Arabella Van Kirk tells us why she attended the college fair and then gives us some insight on her personal future plans and goals. Um, I'm attending the college fair because I want to look at all my options and make sure that I want to go to the college is best for me. For right now, I'm not entirely sure where I plan on going, but I'm leaning more towards uh, UMKC. I want to major in nursing. Um, special education is probably what I want to minor in, but for definite, nursing would be my major. Mr. Pangborn reminds us about his purpose as a college advisor and how he helps students here at BHS. So the goal for having me in the school is to kind of just um, encourage and empower students to go to a college or a trade school or just kind of to have a plan together after high school. So once they graduate, whether you know whether it's a college or two-year school or whatever, um, they'll be prepared. If interested in any other college and career fairs at BHS or around the area, Pangborn knows of a few other opportunities for students to participate. There should be one in the spring that's here. It's not hosted by us, but it should be here. Other than that, there will be, there's virtual career fairs um, through Kansas City, and then there's also um, just a variety of college and career fairs around the area, just throughout the greater Kansas City area. With Isaac Peterson, Michael Landreth, Destiny Quarles, and Brian Reyes, I'm Daniel Higgins with Cutlass TV News. Here's a story on our student group SAD and their role in Red Ribbon Week by Tanner Strife, Joshua Fife, Chloe Murphy, and Avery Hobson. Red Ribbon Week is a campaign that is held every October against alcohol, tobacco, and other drug use. Miss Gibson, SAD sponsor, shares what SAD is and their involvement with Red Ribbon Week. SAD stands for Students Against Destructive Decisions. It's an, a group that used to be Students Against Drunk Driving, but that changed in 1998 to encompass all things that are destructive. So it's a group that where students can come and be like-minded and talk about how to avoid making poor decisions. Well, one thing SAD is really instrumental in Red Ribbon Week and also with After Prom and other prevention events. And so we are trying to get some education out. It also gives students something to be involved in and a, a time to kind of make that commitment that I'm going to do the best I can to make the right decisions. So for Red Ribbon Week, we are going to be giving out some flyers this Friday, October 13th to let you know about the spirit days but we're going to have a spirit week so what you need to know right now is to wear red on monday with sad being a helpful program ashley Wimberly shares what she's learned while being a part of the organization what i learned in sad is how harmful drugs are to kids and adults and it's better to not do them sad helps me understand what not to do how to help people. Julie Wilson, an active member in SAD, shares why SAD is important and how it affects people's lives. SAD is important because we teach not only just our school, but like the community um, about being safe in general, um, not doing drugs, um, safe driving, stuff like that. SAD to me is um, a way to help our community um, better themselves. Um, for Red Ribbon, Red Ribbon Week, um, I participated in the Red Ribbon Week poster um, contest and I will be participating in the Spirit Week. Emma Zarr shares why she joined SAD and the benefits of this organization. Uh, I joined SAD because my friends are in it and it looked really fun um, and it helped educate the school on destructive decisions. Um, the benefits of being in SAD uh, or like to learn, you know, what not to do when you're driving or like not, not to text and drive or drink and drive and stuff like that. We're having a kickoff at the football game on Friday and we're gonna have a spirit week and to educate people on destructive decisions. We're red this Monday to support Red Ribbon Week with Josh Fife, Avery Hobson, and Chloe Murphy. I'm Tanner Stripe with Cutlass TV News. Here's this week's sports report with Samantha LaValley. <laughs> I'm 
I'm Samantha Lavalle and welcome to Sports Report. Boys Cross Country took third at conference with Corey Snyder placing second. Varsity Volleyball performed well in the Grain Valley Tournament over the weekend, making it to the finals of the Silver Bracket and beating Raytown and Grandview. They unfortunately fell to St. Michael's in two sets. Boys Swim competed at the prestigious Como Invitational at Mizzou and finished with 14 PRs. Congratulations to Macy Austin for being named as first team all district in softball. Also to Megan Murphy, Chloe Murphy, Carissa Myers, and Maddie Nugent for making the second team. JV and Varsity Volleyball fell at home to Platte County on Tuesday, but Varsity Soccer defeated Winnetonka 4-0. Don't forget to support your Pirates at Senior Night with a special lights performance from the band. Thanks for watching Belton High School. Remember to tune in next week. And as always, Carpe, Carpe Diem. Diem.